Video game DLC isn't always just overpriced fluff. Sometimes it's full-blown expansions and expansion packs that add things or put a new spin on something. So today we want to talk about some game expansions that ended up being even better than the main game. We've got some of our own personal choices in here as well as what some other people are saying online. Now keep in mind, all of this is completely subjective. Everyone's opinions are different, so we're looking forward to hearing your list in the comments, especially because there are way more examples than just these 10. But anyway, let's get started off with number 10. Let's talk about Watch Dogs Legion's Bloodlines DLC. We wanted to start off with a recent one. This one actually inspired us to make this video. Now, Watch Dogs Legion released in 2020 and it was uh, okay for us here personally. It looked nice, it had a couple of really cool ambitious ideas, but it fell a little flat. That being said, the more recently released Bloodlines DLC is very interesting and has been very well received, uh, seemingly much more than the base game even was. Bloodline straight up brings back characters from the first two Watch Dogs games and tightens things up a bit with more linear sequences, some good gameplay scenarios, more enemy types, and stuff like that. So while this doesn't quite seem like it would sit with the types of systems and the gameplay stuff that Legion set up, kinda yeah, but it fixes the problems with Legion for some people, the story and the agency of the characters. It's just a more interesting campaign, straight up. Here, it once again feels like a straight up traditional Watch Dogs game, doing Watch Dogs stuff, and less about leveling up random NPC characters that you don't really get to love. So if you didn't like Legion, you might think this is a big improvement. This, plus the long promised multiplayer edition, makes it a much more solid game. Next over at number nine, let's talk Borderlands 2, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep. It was really hard to pick something from Borderlands 2. It got a ton of content, expansions and support over a lot of years, but it seems like the general consensus is that the best expansion was Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep, particularly because it's so different from the main Borderlands 2. It's an interesting humor experiment in how it totally makes fun of the whole role-playing game concept. And if you like Borderlands humor, they really flesh it out even further here. That once you load into it, the whole thing takes place inside the character Tiny Tina's head, and it's like a D&D game concept with a Borderlands spin. You're still shooting and looting, of course, but with some tweaks and new enemies and really creative environments along the way and some really crazy paced action in it. That just makes for a memorable, larger scale expansion, and some of us found the story way funnier and more interesting than the main game, which is really impressive. Next over at number eight, we gotta give love to the old school for a minute. PC games, of course, pioneered expansion packs, and there are so many worth mentioning throughout decades. Now, one we think is worth a shout is Baldur's Gate 2's Throne of Ball. Not only does it up the level cap and give you some new class and new skill stuff and new weapons, it also wraps up the main story. You get a new dungeon called Watcher's Keep and multiple new locations and NPCs to interact with. Uh, with this expansion, you also get an updated graphical engine too. It was pretty crazy. What Throne of Ball really served as was just a good conclusion to Baldur's Gate 2 with some really big choices at the end. It had some really over the top epic battles, especially with the newer, crazier, higher leveled characters, and it wrapped up really nicely for fans. Extra stuff to play and a good wrap up? I mean, like, what more can you ask for? Over at number seven, let's talk The Shivering Isles. This was the first major expansion for The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. It released in 2007 and was pretty cool. It plopped a mysterious portal into a new area right in the middle of the map, and you jumped into it and you were thrust into a completely new world and a whole new map with a whole new adventure, with new characters, some crazy new enemies, new loot. It had an open world, NPCs, side quests, you name it. And plus, the main quest featured the iconic Shagaroth, uh, the Daedric Prince of Madness, who was just a blast to see on screen thanks to great writing and awesome voice acting. Really, everything about Shivering Isles was just a bit more wacky and out there and experimental compared to the more traditional fantasy setting of the main game, and it was pretty damn awesome. It may not have been as big as the region of Cyrodiil in the main game, but the smaller world here divided up between the Isles of Mania and Dementia felt completely unique and really worth the time you spent there. Plus, if you were a console player on PS3 or Xbox 360 at the time, these big PC style expansion packs for RPGs weren't as commonplace. So it was really, really exciting and just really fun to play.
Over at number six, this is one of the obvious big ones. Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls expansion served as a sort of revival of the base Diablo 3. Now, Diablo 3 released in 2012 and then Reaper of Souls launched 2014. Technically, the free pre-expansion patch that released for every PC player before Reaper of Souls did the heavy lifting, but yeah. Uh, the patch overhauled a ton of the game's overall systems. It was pretty massive. Skill stuff, classes stuff, uh, the Paragon level system, uh, all of the loot stuff it was all completely overhauled into what they call Loot 2.0. All of this fixing a whole lot of big issues players had with the original Diablo 3 when it released. So, couple this patch with all the Reaper of Souls stuff, like a whole new act, an adventure mode, tons of new stuff, and NPCs, seasons. All of this really was the start of tons of other updates, like Necromancer and a ton of other patches that made Diablo 3 truly the badass game it was meant to be and what people were hoping it would be when they first got Diablo 3. Also, if you want to kick it a little old school too, which I personally do. Shout out to Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction as well. But I digress, let's move on. With number five, let's talk Dragon Age Origins Awakening. Now, Dragon Age Origins was great. It, it seemingly came out of nowhere and ended up being a unique and super fun Bioware RPG. They did it again, and they created a world here that people would love for years to come. But Bioware in their prime, like they must have decided to top themselves when they released the Dragon Age Origins Awakening a full expansion that takes place after the events of the main game. In good RPG expansion fashion, you get a higher new level cap, new party members, enemy types, items, new abilities, all the stuff you'd kind of expect, but also a continuation of the story. It didn't get like standout reviews by critics or anything crazy, but in terms of players and fans, it's highly regarded and well loved. This one is probably the most arguable whether or not it's better than the main Dragon Age Origins quest, but we wanted to just give some love to the original Dragon Age. It, it really is a special game overall, and Awakening especially. Next up at number four, we have The Sims 4 Seasons. Now, just gotta say that The Sims expansions have been awesome since day one. I remember when Vacations released for the first game and we were like, whoa, you can snowboard? And Hot Date added the cool downtown area, which gave you a cool reason to leave your Sims house. Those are the early days and it was a ton of fun, but nothing really changed the game like Seasons. For one, it added an actual calendar year where you can experience all four seasons, each with their own dynamic weather that impact your Sims and gave them new activities as well. With Seasons, you can also get holidays where you could decorate your house and celebrate holidays with your Sim family. You can also modify the calendar and add birthdays or even make up your own holidays. Seasons is definitely a must-have expansion for The Sims 4, seeing that a lot of the content is pretty impactful. Like, think about how The Sims works and think about how introducing seasons and time and calendar can really shake things up. It immediately feels like something the game should have always had, and after you get it into your game, gameplay loop, you probably don't want to go back. It retroactively makes The Sims a way better game. Now down to number three, let's talk Grand Theft Auto 4 and The Lost and The Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony. These were their two big story single player expansions that were really worth the money and worth the experience. First, The Lost and Damned followed The Lost Biker Gang, which was introduced and set up in the base Grand Theft Auto 4 story a bit, and they were fleshed out here because you play as a member of the gang named Johnny Clebb. You might remember him as that random dude that Trevor ended up stomping to death and completely cold-blooded murder in Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah, that guy actually had his own game, his own storyline, and it was a bit more gritty and gross, and his adventure had different weapons, different gameplay elements, came with multiplayer modes and radio stations. Uh, think of the adventure kind of like Days Gone before Days Gone was actually really a thing. And it was great and had a lot of heart and really let you see a completely different side of the world Rockstar built previously with Nico. Then speaking of great, The Ballad of Gay Tony, where you play as Luis Lopez, uh, you get into all sorts of crime-filled shenanigans. This was just like a bit more lighthearted, a bit more weird and out there, and had some pretty exciting action set piece moments, and really emphasized the crime hustle that kind of felt like the precursor to what Grand Theft Auto V is. Some people prefer Ballad of Gay Tony over The Lost in the Dam, but either way, these expansions were huge and incredibly awesome. Now down to number two, let's talk Fallout. Really, like, there's a ton of awesome additions and expansions for all the Fallout games. New Vegas, like Old World Blues or Dead Money, Fallout 3's Broken Steel, or maybe even The Pit. But we've been thinking about Fallout 4 and how for us personally, in hindsight, 
the Far Harbor expansion was much more compelling and weirdly interesting compared to the main game. It was a total shift, totally different vibe, atmosphere, and style, because you head to a small island off the coast of Maine based on Bar Harbor in real life, uh, and it was filled with mystery and, of course, weird sci-fi fallout stuff. And in it, you're working for the Valentine Detective Agency, and you're looking for a missing girl, and you're thrust into an adventure that has some interesting characters, some tough choices, cool moments, and just some good ass fallout questing with a more moody spooky vibe to it there's three factions there's multiple endings a whole new region and a radioactive fog mechanic that keeps things tense if not sometimes a little annoying it's not perfect but the adventure gets really weird in some good ways and feels totally unique and stand out compared to a lot of the main fallout 4 stuff now down to number one this is actually technically a two-parter really let's talk bioshock first burial at sea now, after Irrational Games finished Bioshock Infinite, they got to work on DLC expansions in the hopes of revisiting the original Bioshock's underwater rapture, but with some of Infinite's gameplay mechanics. The result was the later released Burial at Sea, which came in two parts, allowing you to go on a sort of other lighthouse or other dimension adventure where you get to see rapture before the fall. The first part, you're Booker DeWitt, hired by a different, more 50s style Elizabeth, and it's okay. You know, it's fair really interesting, but spins its wheels a bit. But then the second part where you play as Elizabeth, man, that really blows things out of the water and really realizes its potential and serves as a very good final smash for Irrational, who just before this released announced that they were shutting down and this would be their last Bioshock project. It's underrated and really, really worth visiting if you've never had the chance. Bioshock Infinite is really cool. You know, it's a fun adventure, but something about seeing Rapture again just hits different, man. A lot of people enjoyed this a bit more than the main campaign. And also, like I said while we're here, we have a huge honorable mention to Bioshock 2's DLC, Minerva's Den. It was a side adventure that really, really blew people away and ended up being far more memorable than the base Bioshock 2 adventure. It focused around you playing as another big daddy called Subject Sigma on a special quest in Rapture that really, really goes for a smaller but more emotional and effective tale. It's unexpected and absolutely awesome. Those are 10 really great video game expansions, but of course there are so many more out there worth mentioning that we couldn't fit on this video. So we wanna hear from you guys in the comments if you got your own top five or your own top 10 of expansions, maybe if you think they're better than the original game, let us know. Now, if you enjoyed this video and maybe had some fun with us, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It legit helps us out, so thank you. And if you're new, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.